Fifth grade, chapter five, lesson three, SMA quotients. Unlock the problem. Carmen likes to ski. The ski resort where she goes to ski got three and two tenths ski of snow during a five day period. The average daily snowfall for a given number of days is the quotient of the total amount of snow and the number of days estimate the average daily snowfall. You can estimate decimal quotients by using compatible numbers. When choosing compatible numbers, you can look at the whole number part of a decimal dividend or rename the decimal dividend as tenths or hundredths. Carly, Carly and her friend Marco each find an estimate. Since the divisor is greater than the dividend, they both first rename three and two tenths, three and two tenths as tenths. So they did three and two tenths is actually thirty-two tenths. Right? Carly's estimate, 30 tenths is close to 32 tenths and divides easily by 5. Use a basic fact to find 30 tenths divided by 5. So 30 tenths divided by 5 is 6 tenths, or decimal form, you write that as 0 0.6. Then 35 tenths is close to 30 tenths. 2 tenths and divides easily by 5. Use a basic fact to find 35 tenths divided by 5. 35 tenths is, divided by 5 is? 7. 7 tenths, or written in decimal form, is 0 0.7. Oh, sorry, I forgot down here. So over here we need to write, so the average daily snowfall is about 6 tenths foot. So the average daily snowfall is about 7 tenths foot. Whose estimate do you think is closer to the exact quotient? So explain your reasoning. Carly's is probably closer because 30 is closer to 32 than 35 is. Number two, explain how you would rename the dividend in 29 and 7 tenths divided by 40 to choose compatible numbers and estimate your quotient. You would rename 29 and 7 tenths as 297 tenths and give and a low estimate of 280 and 320. Then we would divide 280 tenths by 40 and get 7 tenths. And 320 divided by 40 gets 8 tenths. So our answer is between 7 tenths and 8 tenths. Estimate with two digit divisors. When you estimate quotients with compatible numbers, the number you use for the dividend can be greater than the dividend or less than the dividend. Example, a group of 31 students is going to visit the museum. The total cost for the tickets is $144.15. About how much money will each student need to pay for a ticket? So um, one way to figure it out is letter A. Use a whole number greater than the dividend. Use 30 for the divisor. Then find a number close to a greater than $144.50 that divides easily by 30. So why would they go higher, guys? When you're dealing with money, why would you go higher? Well, to make sure you have enough to pay for everything, right? If you're estimating. So they rounded $144.15 to $150, and they rounded 31 to 30. So, so they said 150 divided by 30 would be what? $5, right? So each student will pay about $5. $5 for a ticket. Use a whole number less than the dividend. Use 30 for the divisor. So they still kept, they moved 31 to 30. And then find a number close to and less than $144. 15, or $144.15 that divides easily by 30. So they rounded $144.15 to $120. $120. So, $120 divided by 30 equals? How many times is No, you get rid of your threes, or your zeros, and three goes into 12 four times. So each student will pay about $4 for a ticket. So basically, the student's either going to pay between 4 or $5, right? Which estimate do you think will be a better estimate of the cost of the ticket? Explain the reasoning. So what did we just say? Why do you, when we go with A or B? A. You want to go with A? 
we would want to go with a because it's better to have enough money and too little. Sharing show. Use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient. So we are going to, we keep the nine the same, right? Since it's a single digit number. So we're going to go ahead and put the nine. What is a multiple of nine that gets you close to 28 and eight hundredths without going over? 27. 27. Now we could have went over, right? But 27 was closer than 36, right? So 27 divided by nine is? Three. Three. 393. 300. 93 and 5 tenths divided by 41. What are we going to round 41 to? 40. 40. Because we don't want to keep it the same, right? This is a two-digit number. Now, what can we round 393 and 5 tenths to? 400. 400. Okay. Now, we could do 360, right? But is 360 or 400 closer? 400 is actually closer. So I mark off one zero here, I mark off one zero here. How many times does four go into four? Yeah. Once, and then I have one zero left, so my answer is yeah. ten. Estimate the quotient. So we're gonna need a low estimate and we're gonna need a high estimate. So write an L for your low estimate and an H for your high estimate. Now on each one of these, do we have to change our divisor? We have to estimate it. No, it's going to stay a 7. What is a multiple of 7 that gets you close to 161 and 7 tenths without going over? 14, so it would be 140. So our answer on that one would be 7 goes into 14. How many times, guys? Twice. And then I add a... Zero. Zero. So my low estimate would be 20. What's a multiple of 7 that would get us a little bit over um, 21, so 210? So our answer would be 30. Because 7 goes into 21 three times, and then you have a zero left over. Okay? Once again, we need a low and a high estimate. So, do we have to change the 9? No. no. So, our divisor is going to stay the same. Now, what's a multiple of 9 that gets us close to 17 without going over? No, that goes over. That goes over, so that would be our high estimate, no. right, guys? So, what would be our low? 9, right? So, 9 divided by 9 is? One. is 1, and 18 divided by 9 is 2. Okay, once again, a low and a high. So low estimate, high estimate. Now on this one, our divisor is a two-digit number, so do we need to estimate it? Yes, yes. yes. so 21 is going to become 20. 20. So what is a multiple of 20 that's going to get us less than 145 and 4 tenths? 140. 140. Okay, so I mark off a 0 here and mark off a 0 here. 14 divided by 2 is 7. seven. So that's my low estimate. What's a multiple of 20 that's going to get me 140? Can be close to 145 and 4 tenths, but just a little bit over. 160. 160. So I mark up zero here, 
Mark off a zero here. Two goes into 16. Eight. Eight times. So my low estimate is seven and my high estimate is eight. eight. Let's go ahead and look at number 11. So we have a two digit divisor, so we need to, we need a low estimate and a high estimate, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have a two digit divisor, so are we going to have to estimate that as well? Yeah. So what are we going to estimate it to? 30. 30. What is a multiple of 3 or of 30? <coughs> That gets us close to $134.42 without going over. $450. That's your high level. Oh. So that would be $150 right here. Okay, so something times 4. What times 4? 120. 120. Okay, so I mark off my zero. Mark off my zero. 12 times 3 is 4. I mean, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4. And 4 what? Dollars. Make sure you put the dollar sign. If you don't have that, you miss it for your label. So, once again, I have a 0 on both sides of the divide sign. So, 15 divided by 3 is 5 dollars. So, my low estimate is 4 dollars. My high estimate is 5 dollars. Okay. Let's look at number 14. So once again, I need a low estimate and I need a high estimate. On my second, on my divisor, my second number, my divisor, do I need to um, re, do I need to estimate yes. that? Yes, because I have two digits, right? So that becomes what? 40. 40. So what is a multiple of four that gets me close to seven hundred eighty-nine dollars and ninety-two cents without going over four hundred? Four hundred. And what would be my high estimate? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Okay, so I can mark off one zero, right? So 40 divided by 4 is 10. So $10. And then I can mark off one zero again. 80 divided by 4 is $20. So there's my low and my high estimate. Now, if I really wanted to only pick one, which one would I probably pick? The high. One. Well, I picked the 20. One, because you want to have enough money, right? But two, was 400 or 800 closer? 800. 800, right? 